Hi everyone, thank you so much for having me again here at SellerCon with you all. Uh, today I'm going to talk about balance the scale. Balance the scale has a double meaning. Uh, first, we are balancing our scale, obviously, and the second, we are balancing our growth while we scale our business. So what most sellers do um, is this. They basically make more money, right? As you grow, you make more money, uh, and hopefully you will save time uh, in the process, right? You want to work less while profiting more, but what ends up happening is that uh, you start with some free time and then you have less and less free time while you make more money. What I want you to have eventually uh, with this business is what you all wanted from the beginning, which is uh, make more money as you go and also have more free time as you go to do other things that you wanna do. If you want to expand your brand, that's great with your free time, but the whole goal is that the business is gonna free up your time and not suck more of your time with it. Okay. That takes me to the why, what, what how, and when. So why is why are you doing this? Where is the satisfaction and passion that you have with your business? So a lot of sales that I know actually want to build a brand. They actually like the products that they sell and everything else. And they are actually building an actual brand with their business. And that's fine. If you are passionate about what you sell, you should open a Shopify store and do Facebook ads and everything else. But for me, for example, I'm passionate about Amazon. I don't really care about the products that I sell or anything. I kind of look at it like the stock market. I don't really care what I buy and sell. I just wanna, I just fell in love with the Amazon business model with private label, and I'm just focusing on that. I don't wanna grow too big. I don't wanna have uh, dozens of employees. I can still build a very big business, but I don't need to expand further from Amazon. Another uh, good why is to spend time with your family, right? Uh, when I started, I really wanted to have more time with my family. Growing up, I had two parents working full time. For me, uh, I wanted to have time with my kids in the afternoon, so I finish working every day, 3.30 p.m., 4 o'clock, I pick up my kids and we just hang out uh, the entire afternoon. I'm with my wife in most evenings as well, and I have a lot more free time with my family. Travel is another big why, right? I uh, also travel the world a bit uh, to different events with my wife and kids and everything, and that's a great why to have. And finally, helping others. I mean, selling products is great. I love selling products, but for me, helping other sellers and helping uh, doing these type of events is uh, what I was set out to do, if you ask me. So helping others is another great why to have, and helping others can also be with your products. If you love what you sell and you love your customers and everything else, that's a great why. But the whole point is why did you start this business? Is this like a means to an end type of thing? Or do you actually want to build a brand? And there is no right reason for this uh, and your why is super important. The what is what do you want to do? Uh, once you have your company, once it's established, do you still want to be involved? Do you still want to do PPC? Do you still want to do product research? What it is that you are set? What it is that you still want to do in your company when you grow? Uh, do you see yourself like doing uh, creating shipments in Amazon in two years from now? Do you still want to do all of this stuff? Or are you kind of sick of doing that and you just want to relax, right? When I say relax, it doesn't mean that you sit on the beach and uh, drink uh, pina coladas all day. That's not what it means. Usually you, uh, you are still very, very busy, but you're busy doing the things that you actually want to do, your hobbies and everything else, and that's great. Uh, the how is how are you doing it, right? Which tools, systems, and employees, it's also the who type of people you need to hire to actually reach your what, right? Who, which, which people and systems and tools you need to have in place to make all of that happen for you and your business. And the when is do you want it a year from now, five years from now, what is the actual goal? If you don't have a when, you don't really have a goal in place. And there is an old saying that says, uh, if you don't have a goal, it means you're already there. In other words, if you don't have a when, it means you don't really have a goal, so you are basically where you aimed to be, right? So you need these four things to have in place. And some of you had this when you started, right? You all started for different reasons, and you kind of forget about these along the way because, uh, again, you just spend more time and more money on your business, and it just sucks more and more out of your time. You maybe you are maybe profiting and everything is great, but you are losing like your hobbies and friends and family in the process of growing your business. So that takes me to this entire methodology that I call balance the scale. So we all start with some free time, right? We all have some free time and maybe we'll launch a first product or two products and we're making some money already. Now, as we grow, what tends to happen is we grow our catalog 
and making more money in the process, but the free time diminishes, right? We, may, we have less free time, but making more money. And this keeps happening over and over and over again. We have less time and we make, uh, we expand our catalog, we make more money in the process. And the problem is, this is all you know usually. When you take an Amazon course, they teach you uh, how to grow your catalog, how to make more money, but that's pretty much it. All you know how to do is to launch more and more products. And you don't really know how to scale this thing to also free up your time in the process, which again is the reason you went into this entire business in the first place. So there are two things that are missing here. The two things that are missing are basically the team and the systems that you need to put in place in order to scale it as far as you want. So um, when you start out, when you have like a few products and everything, I recommend hiring someone as soon as you can afford it. To hire someone in the Philippines or whatever costs like $500 a month, as soon as you can do that, as soon as you can hire someone, you definitely want to do it. And the first hire is also very critical to your success and I'm going to touch about that in a few minutes. Now, the systems is how it all comes together. Who does what, what happens before what, what happens after, and everything that is included inside of that. So when you start building up your team, it's gonna take a while. You might not even expand your catalog. You not, might not make that much more money, but you still wanna grow those things because eventually that's gonna free up more of your time. As you grow your team and your systems, your free time starts to improve. You are probably still working very hard to build those systems and teams and everything, but it releases your time from the day-to-day -day stuff that you have to do and you can think more strategically and actually build a serious business and company. Now, um, again, the team and systems help you improve and grow your catalog and, and make more money. The team and systems grow and then your free time grows as a result as well. And you can keep doing this cycle again and again and again growing everything else and then growing uh, your free time grows as well and it's up to you to what point you want to get to and that takes me to my next point which you all know what free time is you all know what catalog is you all know what money is you all have experience in doing those uh, three things already and kind of try to maneuver between them what uh, almost no one talks to in the industry is about two things that are the team and the systems that you need to have in place and that's what i'm going to talk to you about today so starting with the team that you need to have in place. So there are four types of companies the way I see it. The four types are, the way I treat it uh, to, to make it easy to remember is imagine that your company is a car and you basically choose where you wanna sit in that car. So you have the driver. The driver basically means you're sitting by yourself in your car and you're just driving it wherever you want and you are basically have, you are in full control of whatever you wanna happen, you can hit the brakes, you can hit the gas, whatever it is, you are responsible for it and you are the only one who has some control and doing everything by yourself, almost. Then you have the driving instructor. You are basically sitting right next to the driver uh, and you keep telling them what to do, right? You might uh, hold their wheel and direct them and everything and um, you might hit the brakes uh, on their behalf and they are doing a lot of mistakes in the process. A lot of times you have to go in and do it for them because you just feel it's faster. So this is the driving instructor. This is, if you ask me, the worst position to be in uh, any, any business, really. Then we have the chauffeur. Chauffeur is basically you sit in the back of the car and you have someone else driving it on your behalf. Okay, Someone else is driving the car. You are setting up the goals. You're setting up the strategy and everything else, but they are making all of the day-to-day -day decisions. They decide how to run the PPC, maybe even which parts to launch, things like that. They are making all those decisions and you maybe set up like the yearly profit and your goals and everything else. Uh, that's the chauffeur. And then we have the autopilot and that's what I'm mainly going to talk about today. This is how I structure my own business. And autopilot is, if you ask me, uh, the best, the, what we are all, what we all want to have. It's not that easy to build, but if that's your goal, uh, you will see that it's actually possible to do and I'm gonna talk a lot about that. So let's break these down. So the first is the driver. The driver, uh, you are basically the CEO of your own company and when you see like a small person on the slide, that means uh, it's an actual employee. So you are the employee right there and then you are outsourcing multiple things. The first one is suppliers and inspection, freight forwarders, photographers, graphic designers, copywriters and a bookkeeper and accountant. All of these are usually outsourced. Maybe you have some graphic design skills, maybe you have some copywriting skills and you do it by yourself in the first like listing or something. 
most cases you just outsource all of this stuff at the same time you are still doing you are still talking to suppliers you are creating shipments talking to creative creating listings planning your launch planning your inventory and also optimizing all of your listings now maybe you even have one employee doing customer service maybe you have two more people that you outsource like ppc product research too you are still the driver even if you have an employee or two you are still very much the driver if we remove you from the business right now you don't have a business anymore right you are still driving the company everyone is reporting to you no one is talking to each other in this company so this is a very uh, difficult structure obviously we all start as the drivers i also know very big sellers that are still the drivers because they chose to be drivers they chose to not manage a lot of people they actually wanted to have a very narrow type of business and they outsource everything to experts and they prefer to do it this way most sellers that i know don't really want to stay here but they don't really know how to grow to the next level the next type of business that we have is the driving instructor the driving instructor is basically outsourcing multiple things as well like photographers graphic designers copywriters bookkeeper accountant and they are still doing all these things that you see here now what they are doing is they actually hired a few people so they hired a few people to help them out they hired an inventory manager who also takes away their suppliers and creating shipments they don't need to do that anymore and he is working on all of that but a lot of times because the inventory manager is reporting to you directly a lot of times you will go over their head and kind of talk to the suppliers by yourself or the freight forwarder just to just to see what's going on maybe you want to fix things and a lot of times you just go in and kind of do it instead of them and that's not a good position to be in obviously and then you will hire a few more people again part-time or full-time doesn't really matter uh, product research customer service ppc social media and the list goes on and on but the problem with this structure is that all of them report directly to you I was in this position three and a half years ago I had 12 people on my team some part-time some full-time and it was very messy uh, I didn't have uh, a lot of time uh, for myself and also I many times I had to go in and do it instead of them so I ended up firing the entire team and started from scratch with the autopilot uh, system that I will show you in a second but this is not a good position to be in if you're in this position you only have a few choices one is fire everyone and do what I did the other one is to start promoting people from inside your team which takes you to autopilot and the third one if you're interested is hiring someone from the outside to manage this business for you which takes me to the third structure which is the chauffeur so you can see it's exactly the same structure the only difference here is that we have you are basically the owner and you hire someone from the outside to become your ceo or maybe you're the ceo they are the coo whatever you want to call it but they are basically running everything on your behalf uh, and you are basically responsible for strategy kpis you are basically again directing kind of this ship and this uh, ceo is doing everything uh, on their own with whatever they understand i've seen a few businesses structured this way in most cases it doesn't grow as fast as you would grow it by yourself because this person that you bring from the outside maybe they have some amazon experience maybe they are good friends of yours but at the end of the day they are not as passionate as you about your business if you know them for a short while i would probably not do it but if you know them for a long time and you trust them and everything that has more success a higher success rate i will say but overall i would kind of stay away from this if you can if you're sick of doing amazon and you don't really want to sell your business right now this is a good model otherwise i would stay away from this model so the last one is the autopilot autopilot again is how i run my own business i'm the ceo and i have two people underneath me I have an operations manager and I have an, a marketing manager. The operations manager has two people underneath, uh, underneath her. So she has an SEO person. This person is basically responsible for keyword research, PPC, competitor research. The competitor research that you see here is mainly for like product display ads, what competitors are doing in terms of their ads, keywords, everything else. He's doing all that research. He's also looking at new competitors coming in make sure we are targeting their ASINs and everything else. Then we have an inventory manager doing the reordering, shipping, uh, supplier research. They're handling all of this stuff uh, with our inventory. And the marketing manager has three people underneath. So a customer experience person doing customer support reviews and competitor research. The competitor research here is more about the inserts, the reviews, uh, all of that stuff on how, what are they doing to actually have a good experience as, to their customers. And trying to improve their processes then we have a creative person handling all the listings and copy images and videos 
and also responsible for their product research. So all product research is done here. And then we have a social media person. So uh, managing the launches, Facebook and Instagram, we mainly use social media to launch new products and not really every single day. And this is the team. So I have seven people. I have an operations manager, a marketing manager, and five more people underneath handling all the day-to-day -day stuff. Now, the managers don't really have any daily work. They don't have a, a day job, okay? They are just managing the other people. And how did I find these managers, right? How did I come up with the structure? So um, before I go into that, let me just show you that the managers, all they do is they right now manage the strategy and KPIs. They are not doing any of the day-to-day -day stuff anymore. They are just helping me to come up with a strategy and how many products we're going to launch, things like that. And um, I'm still in touch with the bookkeeper accountant. Inventory is, uh, as you saw before, handling all of the supply chain. Um, the creative is handling all of the creative um, freelancers we work with. And finally, the social media person is working with influencers. So all of this we outsource to experts worldwide. My team sits in the Philippines, each on their own and their house and everything. And the way I built this company is I started from the customer experience person. So I hired someone for customer support part-time, but during the interview, I already said I'm looking for someone who will become a manager someday. And you start this part-time, but it's gonna be full-time. And I already had a seven-figure business at that point. So it happened kind of relatively quickly. So they grew from customer support, then they started doing uh, product research, then they started doing some uh, social media posts and everything. So it took a while, but once they were doing all this stuff, it became too much stuff to do. And I basically promoted them to become managers, to become the marketing manager of my team. When that happened, we basically, together, we hired someone to replace them in customer support, then hired someone for creative, and then hired someone for social media. So they managed all of those three people. We did the exact same process on the other side of the operations. And the cool thing about this structure is that I only trained two people. I didn't need to train seven people in my team. And also if someone leaves for like a week or a month or something, another person can replace them. If an employee leaves, the manager knows the job already so they can uh, come in and replace them. And if a manager needs to leave for whatever reason, the other manager can come in and kind of, you know, manage their people as well. And they kind of already know how everything is done in this team. And I've been doing, uh, I've been working this way for the past two years. So everyone is feeling very comfortable at this point. Now, how do you start, right? Where do you start with the structure? So I'm actually the guy giving all of the green lights in my business. So that's what I still do in my business. And you're going to see some examples of that. And what I found is that there are two types of businesses. So we have operations, right? Which are more analytic. And we have the marketing, which is a lot, which are a lot more creative. And I'm a lot more analytic in my approach. So I decided to kind of keep the analytic um, for me while I built the company. And the first hire that I did was a person who is a lot more creative. This is also one of the reasons I believe that a lot of uh, businesses start as two people because one is more analytic, one is more creative, and they just build this business together. So if you are more creative, if you like doing product research and you like improving the products and coming up with ideas and all of that, that means you're more creative. Uh, and especially if you hate doing PPC, you are probably more creative. Uh, if you enjoy the numbers and spreadsheets and uh, supply chain and planning and all that, you are much more analytic uh, than you are creative. So wherever you are, you can probably want to keep that kind of tree uh, to still do that and then outsource and then hire someone on the other side of it. So that brings me to systems. So you know about my team, you know how my team is structured. So how do we put it in action, right? How do we uh, do this uh, correctly? So. A short story before that, uh, in my day job before doing Amazon, I was basically helping small businesses to grow. This was like a government uh, funded uh, job, you can say, like a company. And there was this guy that came in with two large uh, pizzas and he wanted uh, us to all taste the pizza and he said, I'm going to open a new pizza place. And to this day, this is one, this is one of the best pizzas I ever tasted. And um, we all we were all passionate about this business. We helped him like uh, build up the business, you know, uh, rent a place, buy like huge ovens and everything, started, started making pizzas. He hired two people, one for the shipping and one to like help him make the dough and pizzas and everything. That business failed within the first two months. And the reason it failed is like there are many different reasons why it failed. But the main reason is he's not a business person, right? He really likes making pizzas. He has a great recipe and everything but he doesn't have a system in place. He has a good product, 
but that's not enough to run a business, right? You need to know a lot, you need to have a lot of different skills to actually run a business. Uh, so he's very happy now, he's still doing it uh, as a hobby and everything, making pizza for friends, family, uh, but not, not as a business. This takes me to the process I wanted to show you that we all know, we've all done this multiple times, uh, which is the process for a new product. And you need to have this figured out in your business and you will kind of figure out, you will kind of see right now how it all fits together with my own team and how it's all structured. So we all start with product research. We all look for a product in Amazon, want to source it from China and everything. So we all look for an opportunity. Once we find an opportunity, then we start developing the product. So I call it, I call it like four steps to develop a product. First, we want to make sure that it works. We want to make sure the product is actually a high quality product, that it works as it should. Uh, we are uh, already uh, in a new decade right now. Everything uh, should work as, as whatever you bought, right? Then we make sure that it's actually better. We make sure that we actually have a small improvement to that product from whatever is selling currently on Amazon. The third is that it's profitable and finally that we can get reviews. A lot of people launch their product on Amazon and expect to get reviews at that point. The whole goal is that to know how you're going to get reviews before you actually launch. You need to have a very good experience with your product and packaging and the product and everything around your brand to actually get reviews from real customers. Once we have that, we basically give a green light and that's where I come in. So the managers need to approve the product before I come in and approve it. When I approve the product, this is after I get the samples to my house. So everything still gets through me, but I don't do any of the day to day stuff. When I approve the green light, four things happen at the same time. The first is we work on the keyword research and the listing copy. So you can see that these are two different colors. The keyword research is done by my SEO person, right? He's handling that. And the copy is being handled uh, by the creative person working with copywriters and that's outsourced, right? Then at the same time, we do the image planning. So we work with uh, photographers and graphic designers to get the photos done and everything else. We also work on the packaging design, right? This is also the creative person doing all of that, working with our uh, designer to get the packaging done. And we also prepare the first shipment, right? Pay the deposit to the supplier. Uh, then we start production, inspect and do the forwarding. Then we ship the final samples to the photography agency who work in the, with, in the US. And finally, we, set, we, pay, the sec, we uh, pay the second deposit to the supplier and we ship the, the goods to the US. Now, when you are doing all of these processes at, at once, once you have all of them uh, put together, once the listing is ready, the graphic design photos, uh, the products get to Amazon, when all this is happening, then you can finally launch your product. Launching a product is obviously a process on its own, which I'm not going to cover right now, but this is the probably the most complex process in this business, right? Going from product research to launch. So that's why I wanted to show this one process here. And the thing is, if you think about my team for a second, with everyone I have, you can see that every person in my team touches the product, right? At some point in this process, they are touching the product. And I think that's the key here. I want them to work together without me being that much involved anymore. So I built the company and I built based on this process to make everyone work together on the product. So that takes me to what happens after you launch the product. So after you launch, three things happen at once. Uh, you need to make sure three things are happening. So PPC is the first one. So PPC is basically everything to do with your keyword research, manual targeting, product targeting, you know, video ads, collection ads, uh, spotlight, all, all those ads that we have. You want to use all of them, obviously. So that's PPC. You want to make sure you have your PPC figured out. Uh, the second is inventory management. Everything to do with reordering, shipping, 3PL, keeping your IPI score high, and also maintain a uh, good cash flow. And finally, optimization. So everything to do with your customer support, images, keywords, make sure you are ranked, you get reviews, and you like manage your reviews the best you can. And also tracking your key performance indicators, KPIs, which is sessions, conversion rate, making sure you're on point with your numbers and everything is fine. Now, if you can manage these three things, you will basically win, okay? When I say you win, <laughs> this is gonna be different to each of you. And again, right now, this is just a recipe. You just have like a recipe for one product or two products or three products. As you scale, you have to build that team, right? So you have to think what does winning actually mean to you, right? In your business, what do you actually want? So when I say that you win, you have to figure out what is your why, what, how, and when, 
right? What are those for you? What will it take to make you actually win in this business? And after you have that, you have to decide what type of business you actually want to have. Okay, where do you want to be in one, two, three, five years from now? Do you want to sell the business? Do you want to grow it so it's kind of automated completely without you? Where do you want to be in a few years from now? So once you have that down, uh, I think you will basically win. And uh, yeah, again, thank you so much for having me. Uh, if you go to this link, you're going to get some bonus slides uh, as well because I didn't have enough time uh, in this talk, unfortunately. So you can go to this link or scan this QR code and just get the slides. Thank you again so much for having me at SolarCon. And hopefully next year we can do it in person as it should be. So thank you, everyone.